Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to another Minnesota Twins discussion video and in this one we have got some fantastic news. This is probably one of the most exciting stories well that I've seen in a while. Um, you know, I was gone for a while, I know that, but nothing really happened in that amount of time besides signing Kepler and Polanco to some contracts that I didn't talk about. Uh, but honestly, that's not what's super important because today we are showing interest in Marwin Gonzalez and I am all for this signing this is great I I think this is a fantastic idea and I think the twins are making some big moves by doing this the only problem is I don't know where he's going to play because we are set at almost every position so let's talk about this here so this is what uh, well people have been reporting on this all morning um, the Star Tribune there's a couple other twin specific uh, websites that have been or, or blogs I guess that have been talking about this um, so let's start with where he's going to play. And I want to ask you this too because I have no idea where he's going to play. I thought about first base and I'm like, well, we already have CJ Cron. I haven't heard anything about Tyler Austin. I don't even know if he's on the team to be honest. Like I saw him on the roster like two weeks ago and I have not heard a single thing from him since. So I don't know what we did with him. Um, but CJ Cron, uh, we can move Sonoda first, which would open up a spot at third if he wanted to play there. Um, but first base, I think, seems the most logical because the outfield, I mean, unless we move like Rosario or Kepler to center field and then take away Cave or Buxton, then he could play in one of the outfield spots. But the only problem with that is I don't want to see the Twins because they, they kind of did it last year. Um, well, at least towards the beginning of the season, they were moving guys all over the place and it was never a solid eight or nine guys in the lineup. It was you know six or seven in the lineup every day you know you'd have Grossman and Wright um, one day and then Kepler and Wright the next day and then you'd have him DH one day and then Maurer would be at first and then Morrison would be at first they would flip every day you know and then Andreanza played like all over the infield for a couple weeks and it was a mess and you know I have no idea how Molitor was figuring it all out but with our new coach I, I hope he is I really hope he's he's got got this figured out here but I don't want to see you know we have Kepler cave and Buxton and then Rosario and left I don't want to see Rosario go to right field and then go back to left field and then go to center field so that Marwin Gonzalez can play in left field and then go to freaking first base or something I don't know and then he DHs three days I don't want to see that I want to see eight or nine guys in the lineup every day and like I've said in my in my past videos you know You've got Kepler, Buxton, or Cave, depending on, you know, if, you know, Buxton is healthy. Then Rosario. First base, you've got CJ Cron, I guess, right now. Um, second base, Scope. Thir uh, shortstop, Polanco. Third base, Sano. Catcher, Garver, or Ossadillo. Uh, and then your pitchers. So that's, and then the DH is uh, Nelson Cruz. And I can make a whole starting video on that again. But those are basically your everyday starters I guess the the big names that we've signed to contracts or that we've gone out and traded for those are the guys we're gonna play if we sign Marwin Gonzalez I don't know where he would play every day I mean he I think he'd be a great bench player if nothing else but is that why we're gonna sign him to play the bench like that doesn't that wouldn't seem very logical so where do we play him and that's the biggest question I'm gonna ask you today where do you want to see him play because Honestly, I was not for getting rid of Kepler, but he would have probably been one of the top guys on my list to trade for since he's he's got talent, he's young. Um, I think he would have been a great trade bait person that we could have used for for somebody else or, or if we needed to clear space, I think he would have been a good candidate to go first. Like I said, though, I do like Kepler a lot, and there's nothing against him. Um, just coming from a baseball fan's perspective and, a, and a, as looking at it as a team, um, but that would make sense if, if we shipped him out we got Cruz who can play the outfield and right field like he he said he wants to this year a little bit um, but obviously he's gonna DH 95% um, 99% of the time you know it would make sense Marwin Gonzalez I know he can play the outfield I know he can play first base I know he can play everywhere I just don't see where we would put him that's what my question is to you so I think like I've said at the right at the beginning of this video, I think this is a great idea. He played with Houston since 2012. 
He won the World Series with them. He was a huge contributor in that series as well. Uh, so he started when he was 23, and he's 29 now. He'll be 30 this year. He's in his prime. I mean, he's not... He's not a, the greatest player in the world, but he's not. Hmm, how do I put this? He's better than Miguel Sano because he doesn't get hurt, and he's. Uh, this is not knocking Miguel Sano, but you know what I'm saying. He's 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 a solid to upper tier player. Uh, not gonna hit 90 home runs. He's not gonna hit 30 home runs. He's gonna hit you know. 15 to 25 home runs. He's gonna get on base. His averages are up there, uh, and you know. Let's just go through his stats. How about that? How about I stop talking and we go through his stats? So, started in 2012. This guy doesn't strike out ever, by the way. He played in half the games in 2012 and 2013. He struck out 30 times in both seasons. That's it. That is incredible. Then, in 2014-15, he played a little bit more, just over 100 games. Only struck out 58 and 74 times. His average kept climbing. In the first two seasons, was 220 to 230. Now, in these two seasons, in 2013 and 20 or 2014, 2015, excuse me, it was 277, 279. His on base percentage above 300 in every one of these seasons. Um, and he's also, you know, hit 17 home runs, 16 home runs. He's he's getting on base. He's playing in. He is being productive in the games he's playing. That's what I'm saying. In 2016, 17, and 18, we'll just combine these seasons together. He played in almost every game. 140 games, uh, so a little bit of a break. Obviously, every player is going to get a couple breaks. Uh, in 2016, he had 118 strikeouts, 126 in 2018, and then uh, 99 in 2017. Still not bad. Th those are not bad numbers at all. Uh, considering his average did dip a little bit, um, you know, two, 250, 300, 247. In those three seasons, his on-base percentage is still above 300 in all of them. This guy, he's not, he's not, you know, he's not the greatest player. He's not Mike Trout. He's not Bryce Harper, even though Bryce Harper is not that good. He's not Manny Machado. He is a solid player. He is consistent. He is good, <laughs> and he is going to help the team. Houston uh, did not want to sign him back. Not sure why. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me, considering how good this guy is. But, you know, in his seven years, he played 800 games. He has had over 2,400 at-bats. He has had a consistent average of 264. And that doesn't count. I mean, those the first two seasons were his worst. And he only played in half the games, batting average-wise. Um, and his OBP is above 300 at 318. Slugging is 419. That's pretty average. A um, little bit above average, maybe. Um, and then his OPS is 737 for all the seasons. He has combined total of 500 strikeouts. Uh, he has 76 home runs, 300 RBIs. This is, a, this is a great player. I don't know why nobody has picked him up yet on free agency. And, and finally, I'll cover the last thing here. Um, he, he is projected to have uh, 17 home runs this year. 117 strikeouts, 261 average, 329 OBP, 434 slugging, 763 OPS. I mean, besides the strikeouts, a little bit high. Maybe the batting average a little bit low. I mean, that's that, that's a solid player that I don't know why nobody has picked up yet. So, I mean, if, if I've learned anything from this video, this guy's a great player. I don't know why we haven't picked him up yet. Um, and it's crazy because, like, I have never – I'd never heard talks about this guy until this morning when I looked at the news. And it was just like, boom, Twins want Marwin Gonzalez. And I was like, oh, okay, 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 let's go. Let's let's look at him. And he looks good. So that is my take on it. I think this is a solid player. I just don't know where he's going to play. That's my biggest thing. Obviously, the Twins had a lot of problems last year. You know, Buxton got hurt. Sano was – awful Morrison was awful our pitching wasn't good we were just struggling all around last year but with the offseason moves we've made with scope Cruz, couple of pitchers if we can go pick up one more guy you know if Miguel Sano does tank even though he says he's you know gonna be fine he's slimmed down uh, you know if he gets hurt or 
you know, sucks for the first half of the season. Boom, plug Marwin Gonzalez in. Or Buxton, you know, Buxton sucks. Put him in the outfield. Move Kepler over to center field if Cave's not working out. Or, you know, it. find a spot for him. That's what I'm saying. If this guy's producing, find a spot for him. Even if he wants to play second base. Scope, I mean, I'm not sure how I felt about Scope coming to the Twins, but if he doesn't perform or if, you know, Marwin Gonzalez is a better fit, trade Scope. I mean, or, or even get Marwin... And, and use him for trade bait at, at the deadline or something. I don't know. I think this would be a great idea to to go pick this guy up. And if he can play, find him a spot, plug him into the lineup. So that is my take on it. I just don't know where he's going to play. That's the biggest thing. Let me know does it, who, whose position does he take. And if he takes the position, who do we trade or what do we do? Let me know down in the comments. I really want to have a discussion about this one. So thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I think this is a fantastic video. I think the Twins should do it. I just want to know what you guys think. So that's all I got. Thanks for watching it. We will see you tomorrow for another one. Peace out.